PK Streams here with the Reckless Heroes. What's up? Hey. So, do you want to introduce and what you play? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Chris Saunders. I play lead guitar. Uh, Kevin Tell. I play guitar and do vocals. And Nolan. Well, seven off, I guess. And I play the drums. And Danny's missing, and he plays bass. Yes. 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 Okay. Also vocals. Fair enough. Um, so for those unaware, you obviously had member changes since 2009, yeah. so who is left, who's the original? Um, Chris and I are both original members from 2009, then uh, 2011 Nolan joined on drums, and uh, 2012 Danny joined. Sweet. And, yeah. Where did the band name Reckless Hero originate? Any crazy story behind that? Or no, I just, like that? just thought it sounded cool. So, and uh, <laughs> no real background to the name. Just, yeah. Okay. And I'll see you guys do have like a outfit during the show. Yeah. What is that exactly? Uh, <laughs> well, what we wear now is uh, dress shirts with ties in specific colors to us and the bullet belts. Uh, it kind of started with um, our original drummer and I just kind of goofing around and always wearing like ridiculous colored pants to shows and then uh, he always wanted to like dress up and not just wear like shitty t-shirts. Yeah. And uh, then instead of pants, because uh, we were all going to, Kevin started wearing colored pants and then Nolan was like, nope, when he joined. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Any like reason like behind the color for each of you or the bullet belts, or is it just kind of like a I like this color, I'm wearing this. Well, when I joined the band, the color selection was very limited, so <laughs> I was like, well, this one wasn't done, so I picked green, and then the bullet belt was just my kind of thing. I had one lying around, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna wear this, and then these guys all got them, and then that kind of just stuff happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sweet. Um, so for those who don't know, you obviously have three albums out, mm -hmm. um, Losing Faith uh, in Everything, and then Dark Times. How is this going to be different from the new album? Uh, Losing Faith is a lot more uh, metal. It's um, heavier than any of our older stuff. Sweet. Yeah. More down tuning and uh, it, more intense vocals. Danny brings a lot to the table vocally, so it's there's a little bit more of that. Okay. so. You Guys have a CD release on April twenty first. Yep. Kind of the reason why we got together to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Information will be somewhere down below. Um, do you have a tour that you're going to be doing afterwards, or kind of just do the CD release and go back to the studio? Uh, yeah, in uh, early May, uh, first week of May, we're um, going. We're just doing Western Canada. We're going out to uh, Win like Winnipeg, Manitoba area, first week of May. Then. Uh, Second week, just doing interior BC. Um, all the dates will be on our Facebook page. Okay, um, obviously just keeping East Canada because finances or yeah, we just can't afford to at the moment as much as we'd love to. Uh, it's just it's not really far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about doing like a fundraiser to tour Easter Canada, or do you want to kind of do it on your own terms and not actually ask people for this money too? Yeah, we've never felt good about asking people for money, so we we always like to. I guess kind of do things on our own. Yeah. That. Fair yeah. enough. Um, so, Chris, you mentioned that you have a radio set coming up on April 21st. Yes. What exactly is this? Uh, so, I think Kevin set it up through CJSW. Uh, I guess we're going to be on the air at 3 o'clock uh, playing some live songs Sweet. off the new album and doing an interview. Okay, cool. Um, Kevin, as a lyricist, you obviously do most of the writing on your own. Right. Um, whenever you've sat down to write, has there anything been that's been kind of a difficult to put out on paper or too emotional to write in one sitting? Uh, no, not really. Um, I'm a very shy, quiet person myself, and uh, music, lyrics, that's how I, I guess, Vent my frustration, and get, yeah. get all my feelings out there. So I've never had any issue with that. Got whole stacks and stacks of songs about <laughs> us. Um, 
so are you guys still signed to Black Steam Records? And no. how was that experience if you were or aren't anymore? We are not signed to Black Stream anymore. Um, when we first signed in 2013, uh, it all seemed really cool. Like uh, they signed us, um, put us in the studio right away, uh, got the album recorded by like March 2014, and then uh, we were supposed yeah. to have it out during the summer of 2014. And um, then they just kind of left us in the dark and uh, delayed and delayed. And I don't know. We're finally having to release it on our own. Fair enough. Um, so So you did an interview back in 2013, and I quote, I believe that Calgary has a very strong and devoted punk scene. Perhaps it is still considered underground, but it still has a very strong community of good people who enjoy going to shows and having fun. Do you still feel this is true three years later, or how has it changed? I think it's gotten better over the past three years. Like, um, I mean, past couple of years, lots of touring bands we talked to uh, wouldn't um, would say that they wouldn't even come to Calgary or wouldn't play on a weekend because people just wouldn't come out to their shows here and um, but I don't know with the Junos coming here and um, more punk and metal arriving but Calgary's definitely on its way up as far Sweet. as the scene goes um, if individually or as a band you could name your top three influences who would they be I think individually for me it's uh, R really early AFI, uh, Children of Bodom, and uh, all of Children of Bodom, not just really early, and then all of uh, August Burns Red are things that really influenced my playing. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, I come from a more punk background, so like um, hot water music, small brown bike, like post hardcore, heavier punk. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Like I came from like punk roots, but then as I learned to play the drums a little bit better, I kind of got bored of punk, so metal just seemed a little bit more natural, so shifted into that. Like, as far as bands go, like Rise Against and Strung Out were definitely some of my, like, early favorites. Uh, as far as now, like, well, I know As I Lay Dying is done, but, like, I really, really like them. Soil Works, another big one that I love. Uh, Children of Bodom as well. Same with Chris. Like, yeah, always been into those guys and love what they do. Sweet. Have any collaborations coming up, or is there anyone you would like to work with? Uh, we're doing a uh, split album with a band from Messinat called Western Death. Sweet. And, uh, that um, we already recorded and everything, so the album we're hoping to have it out by summer. And it's a 12-inch, correct? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Is there anyone that you would like to collaborate with, whether it's locally or even an international band? Uh, definitely. Locally, there's a lot of bands that we get along really well with. Uh, I really have a soft spot for Shark Infested Daughters. It does uh, too. <laughs> I do. Um, well, myself, I got to, I set up the CD release show and uh, got to basically handpick the bands I wanted to open for us. So uh, those, there are many multiple bands I'd love to work with. Um, I guess two of my tops would probably be Me Three or The Foul English. Sweet. I can't say I have an individual favorite or someone that I would like to collaborate with. Like each musician and friend that we've met along the way, like always has a different push and pull, and it's always nice to see what they can bring to the table, and they also can elevate you to different things. So you obviously put in about six hours a week of band practice together, and then two to five individually. And you used to host house shows. Is this still relevant, or how has this changed? I haven't had a house show in a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those are always fun. That's oh, good. there's so much fun, but we, we live in a it. duplex, and uh, our neighbors would hate us even more, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if anyone else is having a house party, we'll, we'll gladly play, play there. Yeah. No, as far as practicing goes, I'd say it's been pretty consistent. Yeah. Like, like Nolan was saying, practice has been really steady. We uh, we get more excited about things when we're actually doing, like when we're playing, instead of just writing. So now it's kind of, we're going to play a little more together, uh, getting ready for a tour and stuff. But. So, in the past, you've been known to play the Power Rangers theme song as a cover, but you guys as a band don't really like covers. Have you decided to continue playing this one song, or do you want to change it up, add another cover, or how do you go with that route? 
I think eventually we will change what cover we play. Uh, Power Rangers is just kind of a silly. Uh, it started as a joke when we were like, "Oh, we should do a cover," and then we were like, "Oh, we should do this song," and then we did that song. It's pretty awesome. Sticks is a pretty awesome game. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, you always said you wanted to do a Sticks cover, and I this did. one just kind of is like, "Oh." When we finally found that out, it was like, oh, that's really cool. It's nostalgia for the 90 kids, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, If on tour you could drink one non-Canadian beer, what would it be? Start with you, Kevin. Uh, That's tough. Um, Well, one time in Fernie, we were uh, just handed low umbrellas all night, so that was a pretty good night. Yeah. Sweet. It's pretty good. Uh, if it's if it's nice outside, I I always like uh, Cronenberg, specifically the Blanc. It's really nice on a really nice day. Yeah. yeah. And I agree with Chris with uh, the Cronenberg Blanc on a nice day, but Canada's got a ton of really good micro brews that Sweet. like, especially even in Calgary, like with the Wild Rose and Village Big and Rose. Tool Shed and all that kind of stuff, like. You got a ton of wicked beers that I enjoy drinking all the time. Okay, sweet. Fine. If it was a Canadian beer, what would it be? Keith's. <laughs> Keith's. Okay. Oh. Um, oh, Phillips makes lots of good stuff. I was say, Blue Buck is yeah, delicious. delicious. Phillips is pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who is the easiest to get the angriest in the band, and who's the happiest in the band? <laughs> when we're jamming, not here. no one gets the angriest. <laughs> no one gets the angriest, what? Only, only when we're jamming. Fair enough. Uh, not, yeah. I wouldn't say that's completely correct. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, some days they're better than others. But like Danny's still probably the easiest to upset. And, okay. Yeah. The quickest to turn, for sure. Yeah. And what about the happiest person in the band, overall? Danny's a pretty happy guy too. Yeah, he's pretty happy until we make him not happy. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam, Danny's good side is what you're saying. Yeah, he's an emotional guy. Um, what are your opinions of the Calgary music scene and the Canadian music scene as a whole? Uh, I, I love it. It's it's uh, the Calgary scene has kind of become home and. The Canadian scene is just awesome to see. It's it's so different in different parts of the country. Like depending on where you are, like we've been in parts of Quebec where like nobody speaks any English. And we go on stage and everyone still has a great time. And it's it's cool to see how like music brings people together like that. Uh, and well, like the Calgary music scene, like Chris was saying, like. It's definitely become a home for us. I've been playing here for years and years and made tons and tons of friends like in the process. So like definitely a really strong community. Um, I feel it's definitely grown and like that's always a good thing. Like bringing new people in, getting rid of the fucking electronic shit that's coming out all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bringing people back to some good solid musical roots instead of a guy going like this and then Oops. pretending like he's on his headphones the whole time. He's actually just like Texas. playing Tetris or texting or whatever. Uh, but like as far as Canada as a whole, like it's good everywhere. Like and it's good to see um, people or musicians, I should say, like everywhere popping up and continuing the fight, not giving up because it's really hard work and you don't really see much credit for it and you spend lots and lots of hours practicing. Yeah. So like it's good to see that everywhere we go, like. There's lots of people that are willing to do the same thing that we are, and yeah. Sweet. You mentioned in the past that you find that Montreal's a lot bigger of a music scene than Calgary is. Why do you think this is? Um, in Calgary, people almost need a reason to go to a show, whereas in a place like Montreal, people just go without thinking. Like it's, I guess, bigger party town. Uh, I don't know. The music scene's just more developed there. People are also a lot closer together, so it's a lot easier to get people out when it's a 10-15 minute walk as opposed to a 30 minute cab ride or 40 minute like sea train bus adventure excursion because it's basically who wants to be the sober person <laughs> just chilling. I mean, not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it's always fun to let loose. Exactly. I'll
Um, do you guys have any pre-show rituals, or is it just kind of a setup, sound check, get ready for the show? That's more or less oh, it. Yeah, like as far as rituals go, I know Danny likes to drink coffee. I always have a smoke before we go on stage, but other than that, it's no stopping each other. And nothing no, crazy no, like that. no weird really satanic the, rituals. Uh, we've really tried to turn the uh, t uh, load out or load in and set up into an art form, so that's kind of our ritual. <laughs> we're really good at that. Um, have you guys? Is either individually sustained any injuries on a show locally or on tour and any crazy stories in that regard? Uh, no, I think all of us have been pretty good, maybe some bouts of the cold, but like that would be really the extent of most of it. I know Danny had a hard time our first cross Canada tour. He he came back with a lung infection and like wasn't able to play our last show, he had to go to the hospital. Everything was fine, like, hey, good but sugar. yeah, it was, that's really about it. I think a couple couple injuries as well on stage, yeah. and Danny fell off well, once. Stage and Edson and, or something, yeah. Yeah, I know you guys have taken headstocks to the face, oh, yeah. so <laughs> there's that. But other than that, nothing, nothing serious. Yeah. Okay. Um, individually, do you prefer all ages shows, Asian Plus, and bigger venues like a community hall or something smaller like a pub or a bar. Licensed all ages shows. For sure. Yeah. So you can still drink, have fun, but everybody can go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd agree. Um, there's, there's been a couple of all ages shows we've had a lot of fun at, uh, and even at like a bigger venue like a community hall. As long as it's licensed, we've. We've still had some fun at, you know, like three in the afternoon in a community hall with four-year-olds, you know, dancing around in the pit and whatever. It's still a good time, right? Sweet. Yeah. Well, and as far as, like, big venue, small venue goes, if it's full, we love to play it. If it's empty, we still love to play it. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any music videos coming out for any of your songs? Um, well, we released the uh, the abandoned one, which I'm sure you guys have all seen. Yeah. And uh, we've got one in the works. It hasn't begun shooting yet, but it's just on the verge. It's uh, essentially just figuring out a couple more details and getting schedules and all that sort of stuff lined up. And then that should be good and hopefully able to collaborate with our release for the summer. Sweet. Mm -hmm. um plans for the band or? Um, yeah, on top of all of the uh, releases and getting this music video ready, uh, we've been writing just any in all of our downtime. Like we practice six hours a week, so two of those hours at least go into development of new material and we're hoping to hit the studio in February to record our next full length, hopefully. So you have three albums right on the works. The C release is April twenty first. Yeah. The split for the summer, and yeah. then a new album that you're recording in February. So as well as the music video for the split for the summer. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, keep busy. Yeah. Lots of writing. Don't like to uh, just sit around all the time. That's fair. Uh, we have been doing it for like the past year, so yeah, <laughs> we're forced into it rather. <laughs> Is there anything you want to touch on that we might have not mentioned, or like anything secret? Oh, you'll just have to wait. <laughs> oh, come <laughs> on! <laughs> Mute! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that's that's essentially it. Like, we're always constantly touring. Like, I'm sure we'll be back on the road for summer as well. And then, um, hopefully early September, and like that sort of stuff, before the snow gets on the road. and. It's a little bit more treacherous to, to go everywhere. No, you're from Canada, come on. <laughs> What's snow? Yeah. But oh. hauling a trailer and going like 10,000 kilometers, like eventually something might happen. We don't want to get the van stuck in the snowbank of the hotel parking lot again. Not again. We're pretty what? sad tow yeah. truck ride. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we were playing in Brandon, Manitoba, and we had to pull the van around from the front, or the, from the back of the venue to the front of the venue, but it was super windy, and the road it was on is just like a big ice slick, and uh, yeah, so Kevin comes running into the hotel room, like, 
grabs Nolan and I, he's like, come on guys, like, you gotta come push the van out. We're like, what? And it's just yeah. like this three foot snow bank, and, like ice on all Both sides sets. of the van. And we're like, okay, no. Yeah. So we had to get it's the like tow truck to move it out. 60 feet. It was good, good stuff. Yeah, eight times and, uh, <laughs> as, long as, as, it's as long as it's times. Anyways, that's it for Reckless Heroes. All the information is below where the fuck button is. And see you next time.